Well, welcome to our Bible study today. We're with us in the studio, we've got Sarah Jane. We've actually got Lance Bolton, who's a, um, a chaplain and a religious education teacher in a school in Auckland. Then we've asked Todd and Jessica to hang around for a Bible study. So today we're looking at Revelation 22. But before we get to that, the message of Christmas, Sarah, it's, uh, it's about families, but it's about much more than that, isn't it? Oh, yeah, way much more than that. It's about us just uh, giving us a time to remember that God sent his son to die for us. And because of that, we've got this amazing gift of eternal life. And I'm actually going to read a bit um, yeah. to sum it up. Found in Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. His, he is Christ the Lord. So not just a, a good man, no. but he's a saviour. Yes. And this is good news for Definitely. who? For everyone. For everyone. Good so no matter where everyone. you are, no matter what circumstances you've been through this year, this is the hope to beat all hopes. It is an awesome message of hope. It doesn't matter what's going on in our world. It doesn't matter if we're feeling like we're getting overcome with disasters. We've got um, famine happening in the world. We, you know, the USA could go bankrupt. It doesn't matter. We've got this amazing hope in Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, Todd, of course, if the United States did go bankrupt, that might cause you a little angst because you're living over there. I might just move over here. You just might move over here. Well, that would be a smart move. But, Todd, you know, the, the Apostle Paul, he actually speaks about this, you know, about mm -hmm. hope, doesn't he, in mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians. Do you want to just share yep. that with us? 2 Corinthians 4, 1. Therefore, since through God's mercy... We have this ministry. We do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. Now, I love that because people can so easily lose heart. They can actually just get discouraged and give up. And in losing heart, they lose hope and so much more. But what is this ministry is actually, you know, talking about here? Um, you know, this so, ministry, this yeah. ministry, you're talking about spreading the good news, the amazing news that we have of Jesus' birth, his death, and coming back to take us home. So it's spreading this good news, this hope that we have in telling as many people as we can. That people need the Lord. People need the Lord. Because he's a saviour and he's the one who's here for us. So we're not going to lose heart. We're not going to give up with any of that. What? That's a real marvellous message, isn't it? Mm, I just, I, I, they can push my buttons and really get me going. And... Um, in fact, you know, Jessica, if we just think about this wonderful picture of hope, Revelation 22 mm -hmm. just really talks about that. Um, can you just look that up for us? Revelation 22 verses 1 to 4. And it's just a, a, yeah, it's a pretty cool message that we just want to pick up on here. Yeah, Revelation 22, 1 through 4. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. Wow. Now, Lance, that's a pretty amazing verse, don't you think? There's a little phrase that sort of stands out there, and that is that they shall see his face. And, um, you know, People all over the world, you know, Christians believe that, you know, no one can see God's face. And yet here is this little sp snippet right at the end of the Bible that says that we should be able to see his face. What do you think of that? Uh, I, I think, again, that's, that's a message of hope. So much of our experience here, there are no answers. God has not in his wisdom deemed for every step to have the answers we mm -hmm. want. And part of it is this intangible God that we can't see or touch or hear. And right there, he promises, you'll see my face. And if you're face to face with God, that's a time for answers. That's a time for everything coming to a point where we can go, ah, and it all makes sense. So there's no fear in that? I because, you know, you know, people today can be so afraid of God. And yet here is this face to face encounter. So there'd be no fear in that, would there, hmm. at that point? It, for me, you know, it just sort of leaps out that this is a beautiful, hope filled little, little, snippet right at the end of the Bible to say, hey, don't ever lose heart, don't ever give up because you're going to get a face-to-face -face encounter with the king of the universe. Now, that's pretty amazing, I reckon. Um, just as, as we think about 
about the, this closing chapter, you know, one of the things that sort of comes through again and again through this is Jesus says, um, repeats this little phrase. What's the phrase he's repeating, Sarah? He's saying he's coming soon. He keeps, he, three times he says right at the end of the Bible that he's coming soon. There's an urgency about it, an urgency for us to take that hope of our Saviour and to share it with as many people as we can. Okay, and that's fantastic. Now, final question for all of you, just to think about, what are you looking forward to most about heaven, about the hope, about meeting with God? Jessica? I'd say that, I mean, speaking of seeing him face to face, I think that just, just seeing Jesus face to face and just being able to talk with them just one on one, I think that's what I'm most looking forward to. Fantastic. Todd? Mm, wow, well, I mean, so many things we can do. Uh, I, I suppose we'll, we'll continue doing what he started when Jesus came. He helped people. I feel like we're still going to help the universe. It's going to be probably like that. Okay. All right, Lance, what are you looking forward to? I'm school chaplain of two schools, and my students always say to them, I can guarantee you, if you accept and go with Jesus your entire life, make him a part of your life, you'll never regret it. And I want a little bit of I told you so. Catch up with all the students <laughs> Streets heaven, of gold. Catch up with them and Fruits just go, and they'll yeah. come up and go, Pastor Lance, you were so right. And I'll just go, I told you so. And we yeah. <laughs> that would be sweet. A little yeah. bit of, you know, yeah, all right, I'm hearing you. Sarah Jane? Well, apart from the awesome feed that we're going to have when we get up there, which I'm really, really looking forward honey. to. Yep. Yep. I'm also looking forward to getting up and singing some gospel with the angels, you know, just before God, right in front of God. Oh, that reminds me. I'm looking forward to being able to play the trumpet like really well. You know, get those <laughs> super high notes and just be able to yeah, jam around with James Morrison or whoever else is up there blasting the trumpets. Yeah, that's going to be pretty, pretty cool.